will be available on all other platforms after one year, meaning that it's still a PlayStation exclusive. Bro, at this point, just make it permanently exclusive. Bruh. Alright, uh, what's up, Kaji? So apparently there are billions and billions of editions and you're probably confused which one you should buy. Hell, even I'm kind of confused. I'm not sure which one to buy. There are people buying every single edition possible to go against the woke agenda that's trying to cancel this game. So we're going to be actually looking through and we're going to see which edition is the best if you need the help. In fact, I need the help too. So we're going to be checking this out. Drop a thumbs up and let's roll. Harry Potter fans and gamers alike are eagerly anticipating the release of Hogwarts Legacy. The open world RPG set in the Wizarding World has already become the best selling game of 2023, climbing to the top of the list on Steam. And this has all happened prior to the game's initial release. But if you were yet to decide- I mean, shout out to the boycott culture, boys. Thank you all for that one. Whether or not you want to purchase the game, I'll be breaking down each of the editions available, as well as which one is the best option to purchase. Hogwarts Legacy is releasing on February the 10th for the PS5, Xbox Series, and the yep. PC. But those on old gen and Switch are going to have to wait some time before they get their hands on the game. W, in your opinion, that they delayed the PS4 and the Xbox One version, or L? When Xbox One will receive the game on April the 4th, and the Nintendo Switch release is set for July the 25th. Typically, developers are eager to push the game for release and will tend to fix and patch holes after the game is in the public's hands. But it seems they are taking care with the older generation versions and making sure that the game is polished before its release. Yep. When purchasing Hogwarts Legacy, there are three options to choose from. The Standard Edition, the Deluxe Edition, and the Collector's Edition. The Standard mm. and Deluxe Editions can be purchased both physically and digitally, whereas the collect So far, I'll say like Deluxe Edition, but I want to see like the differences and the price points. The Collector's Edition is only available physically. Now let's break down the Standard Edition of Hogwarts Legacy. It is the cheapest of the three options and is the one that most of the players will tend to go for. It includes the base game as well as an Onyx Hippogriff mount, but to get that you need to pre-order the game as it's a pre-order exclusive. If you pre-order okay. the game on the PS5, you will also receive the Felix Felicis potion recipe. This appears to be a PlayStation exclusive only and won't be available after the game's launch if you did not pre-order it. PlayStation users will also be granted access to the Haunted Hogsmeade shop quest. We will go into more detail about this quest later on. Oh, if dang. you purchase the standard- There are some things that are only going to be PlayStation. If I'm not mistaken, there's like a mission or two that's going to be exclusive uh, on PlayStation. I could be wrong. Let's see. Can after the February 10th release, you won't receive the Onyx Hippogriff now. This is the same for the Felix Felicis Potion. Moving on to the Deluxe Edition, it also contains the base game, but a standout is the 72 hours early access, meaning mm. that you can play the game on February the 7th, compared to the rest of players who have to wait until- I genuinely feel like that more games should do this, where I'm not saying that, yo, they, they should do Deluxe Editions all the time that only has it, but I feel like that a lot of games, like if you pre-order, there should be an incentive. If you're gonna pre-order, like at least give people the ability to play 72 hours early. I feel like that's a good reward. That's a good effing reward. How much is deluxe? Is it like hundred dollars? Because the normal game would be like seventy. Is this hundred? The Feb 10th release date. This early access, of course, is only available for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC users. If you pre-ordered Hogwarts on an old gen or Switch, you won't receive any early access when the game comes out. The deluxe Damn. edition also includes the Dark Arts Pack, which contains a Thestral mount, which is one of the few mounts we have seen available. The Thestral mount will most likely have the same functionality as the Hippogriff, as it is both able to travel by air and ground. Another important note is that the Dark Arts Pack is the only way to obtain this mount. If you purchase the digital deluxe edition of Hogwarts Legacy by buying the game via the PlayStation or Xbox stores, you will receive a Dark Arts Garrison hat, which is just another cosmetic item, but this is exclusive to digital versions of the game. The deluxe okay. edition also comes with the Dark Arts cosmetic set, as well as the Dark Arts Battle Arena, which we saw Bruh. in the dev update not too long ago. The Dark Arts Battle Arena is an area where you can use dark magic, such as the unforgivable curses. If you choose Man, to don't tell me that that's also part of a cancellation, because we gotta cancel this too. We gotta boycott this. Hopefully there's none like that because I can only imagine there's probably like a controversy with this one too. They're gonna find that controversy. Bruh. your character down that route. Now players who purchase the standard edition will still have access to other battle arenas in the game, but they will have to purchase the Dark Arts pack separately via DLC if they wanna access this content. The third oh, and damn. final version of the game is the Collector's Edition, which includes all the content seen in the Deluxe Edition, including the 72 hours early access. But more importantly, it contains a life-size floating ancient oh, magic yeah, wand yeah, yeah. with an accompany bookcase, which is a physical item that you can plug in and display a wand, which floats on top of the book, which is pretty cool. Okay, yeah. like, if I'm not mistaken, this one is, like, really overpriced. Bruh. I remember when they first revealed it, ish, I'm not sure how much it is right now, but a lot of people were saying it's overpriced, and uh, I'm not even talking about, like, the boycott culture or the woke culture or anything like Bruh. that. A lot of people were just saying it's overpriced. How much can it be, dog? I'm gonna take a guess, and I'm gonna say 300 or maybe 400 USD. 
It also comes with the steel case and its own collector's edition box. Within the game itself, you'll get access to the Kelpie Rope, which is a cosmetic item that only collector edition owners will be able to obtain. PlayStation owners oh, have been looked after by WB Games, as not only will they receive the Felix Felicis potion recipe if they pre-order the game, they will also be granted access to the Haunted Hogsmeade Shop Quest. The Haunted Hogsmeade Shop Quest is an eerie mystery adventure involving Hogsmeade's shopkeeper, Madame Mason. It will only be available for the PS5 and PS4 versions of Hogwarts Eww. Legacy. Players who complete the Haunted Hogsmeade Shop PC and Xbox, man. God damn. I mean, it's nothing like too mega or anything Bruh. like that. But thoughts, boys? If you're on Xbox, I want to know your and thoughts, And Associated man. Dungeon will also get exclusive access to their own shop in Hogsmeade, where they can sell items and gear at rates far better than anyone else in the game. So it seems that PS5 users are getting a bit of an advantage, as they will most likely be able to access better gear faster and much more easily. Personally, this doesn't bother me, as I will be playing on the PS5, but I can fully understand how this- <laughs> Yeah, Sony Ponies gang, rise up, man. Yeah, I don't know, if you're a bot, like, how you feel? You feel like that it's um, nothing too big? As a Sony Pony, as someone who plays on the Sony Pony, it's nothing too big, but it's, like, it's one of those things, right? Like, I mean, like, come on. Bruh. Bruh. It's a bra moment. It's one of those things. This can be frustrating for PC and Xbox users. However, yeah. there is a small silver lining regarding this, as the Haunted Hogsmeade Shop Quest will be available on all other platforms after one year, meaning that it's still a PlayStation exclusive, but only for a limited time. Another okay, key detail year. to know is that a pre-order isn't required to obtain this Shop Quest. So if you purchase the game after- Bro, at this point, just make it permanently exclusive. Bruh. One year, one year, are you guys out of your goddamn mind? I remember when, uh, when Call of Duty did the same thing, man. <laughs> They did that, I believe so far they've done it like twice or thrice or three times. They made that Spec Ops Park, there was survival, if I'm not mistaken, back in Modern Warfare 19, that they made exclusive for the Sony ponies for the PlayStation for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 19. And then a year later it came out Bruh. and nobody really gave a damn about it. And even when it was on the Sony ponies, even when it was on PlayStation, it wasn't too good. It wasn't as good as the original Modern Warfare 3 survival you know what i'm saying so uh but but this time i mean i'm not talking call of duty we're not talking call of duty here we're talking hogwarts so uh, i'm assuming this is probably gonna be probably gonna be good let's see after february 10th you will still have access to this quest all right let's break down the pricing of each version of the game oh, the standard edition is coming in at 69.99 on the ps5 and series x and s and coming in at 59.99 on the ps4 and xbox one as well as the nintendo switch in your opinion games do they deserve to be $70 in this day and age? One if yes, two if not. I feel like if a game is complete, no microtransactions, and it's quality, then $70, 100%. But if you're gonna have microtransactions, they said no microtransactions in this one. It's a story game. Looks like quality, but obviously we gotta play to judge it, right? Let's hope it's not like Cyberpunk 2077. So far, I'll give it I'll give it a pass though, okay? But but we need Bruh. to know. We need to see though. Deluxe edition costs $79.99 on the PS5 and Series X and $69.99 on the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. The collector's edition is coming in at approximately 300 US dollars, which translates to 430 Australian Damn. dollars, which is where I'm from. That is quite extortionate and a large sum of money. Part Bruh. of my hands on. Bruh, bruh, bruh. 300? Okay, I'll go with deluxe. If I'll go with deluxe because that's only like what, ten dollar extra? And you're getting like three days early access that that alone is but three three hundred dollars for that god damn as only certain outlets are distributing them and it is in much limited supply now the big question is which edition should you purchase I'll go if with we're deluxe. strictly speaking of value i'd have to say it is the deluxe edition as for yep. an extra ten dollars you're walking away with a handful of cosmetic items as well as access to the dark arts battle arena but more importantly three days early access which i know yep. is massive for quite a few people as most of us are counting down the days until we can get our hands on the game i can't see much value in the collector's edition as it's at a very extreme price point but i would say if deluxe uh, I was expecting Deluxe to be $100. If it was $100, then it's like, okay, I mean, you can wait three days, right? But $10 extra, you get a little bit of exclusive content, a little bit of DLCs, and on top, you get three days early access. I would say Deluxe, 100%. But let me know your thoughts. Click on this video on the screen. Someone was able to play the game early and they shared their first impressions. Or click the video on the left. A dev talked about the multiplayer in Hogwarts Legacy as well. Click on either one and I'll see you right there.